to Tome Topple was probably back in June. And this is my wrap up that I'm finally getting around to. So please excuse all the lateness and I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back to Novel Nomad. My name is Kate and today I'm going to be doing my Tome Topple wrap up. This has been a long time coming because I was traveling over in Melbourne and I've come back and I did film it before but I accidentally deleted that film. So I'm to do it again. You probably recognize my outfit from a previous video, but that's okay. We're here to talk about books and that's the main thing. So the first book I read during my Tome Topple readathon was The Liar's Key by Mark Lawrence. Now, this is the second book in the Red Queen's War. It's, it's going to be a trilogy. The third one is already out, The Wheel of Osham. I didn't realize that. I picked this up thinking I have to get to it. And then the book came out during Tome Topple weeks. So I was just like, perfect. I'm already put it on my TBR quite high because I want to get straight into it. Um, I can't give too much away what happened in this book, but it follows Jalan and Snorri on their adventure. They're currently in this one, they're up in the north um, and they go on further adventures. Now you get some new characters into the little group. Um, Tutugu is still with them. It's quite fun. And of course, Jalan is being his usual cowardly self. He um, does get in a few scrapes, he does get into a few philandering ways, and um, he does steal quite a few things, all for the name of, uh, you know, survival, of course. But it is a wonderful read, I absolutely loved it, just as I did the first one. Uh, I even think it's on the same level, I didn't experience a like second book kind of dip with this one. I it, The ending absolutely made me laugh. It was so perfect for Jalen and it is so perfect how this story continues and how it drags him through and I just think it was a really good ending and it kind of delved more into the history of the Red Queen and the reason for her war and the continuation of her war. So I thought this was a really, really good improvement on a really solid first book in a trilogy and if Mark Lawrence continues with Jalen and Snorri as he has been going, it's going to be an amazing third book to round out a great trilogy. The next book I finished during Tony Tuffle was The Diviners by Libba Bray, which is set in 1920s New York, and they actually have more supernatural magical powers in this one. Um, for such a chunky book, I did think that it could have been condensed further. I did enjoy the characters. I think they were the ones that were actually making me keep reading. I think there was a bit of fluffiness or there wasn't enough substance in the plot to keep it quite strong read but otherwise I did still enjoy it. I think the issues with the characters was there wasn't enough character development. They had strong characters yet the characters didn't really move the plot. There was definitely intrigue and scariness to it which was quite fun to read but there needed to be more character development in my belief. They, she has these really strong characters, they have really good bases but it just kind of spoilers ahead, but it kind of went back to the beginning with the characters. They never really advanced, they never really moved forward. I wanted to see more character development. I think I still am going to pick up the second one. I'm interested, but it's not something like The Liar's Key is, I was so excited to get into it, and I can't wait to get to the third one. Where this one, I'm interested to see how, where it goes. I really enjoy the characters, and that's why I'm interested, but at the same time, I really, really hope that there's development and there's whole plot development because you have this amazing world that you're introduced to. I'm trying not to give too much away, but um, you never really get to experience it and it's only a tiny bit of it. And I suppose this is the first book in the series, but I still wanted a little bit more, a little bit more introduction. It was a fairly fast read being a YA and I was surprised how fast I read it considering the number of pages. So the third book that I got to start during my Tome Topple readathon was The Oversight by Charlie Fletcher. Now this one I have to say took me a while to read because I just finished it recently and it wasn't because I didn't like it, it was because the writing was so well set within a Victorian period, it made me feel like I was reading a Dickens, for example. The level of detail was spot on. It really felt like a classic. And after, when I started this, I started to slow down because I didn't want to rush it. I felt that if I rushed it, I would be doing it a disservice. So I really took my time with this one. And it paid off in the end. I think I thoroughly enjoyed 
how diverse it was and how many threads and characters Charlie Fetcher managed to weave and develop within the story and the plot and I never never really lost track of where I was or where the plot was going it really felt very structured and I really thoroughly enjoyed that so to do with the plot it basically follows the Oversight who are a free company who basically police the supernatural in the mortal world and to their headquarters in London a young girl was delivered but she's actually trapped to get the key which opens the doors between the supernatural world and the mortal world. The plan manages to exceed to an extent the oversight are weakened. The key itself is in question but Lucy has disappeared and obviously there's a lot of bad nasty villainous characters in this who are trying to gain power from the supernatural world. Most of them are mortal but they are living off the means and the inquiries and the history of the supernaturals and they are weaving a very dangerous plot all together as one even though they don't know they might be working with some, some of them, um, they are weaving a plot against the oversight because the oversight is a barrier between them and the supernatural world. With the amount of plots, characters, the level of detail within this book, I thought it was very well done. Where this book seems to lose out is in how diverse the plot has become, how varied, how widespread. It loses the clarity, I think, that the plot needs to develop properly even throughout the arc of the novel. I can see this being an excellent, really really excellent introduction to the rest of the series. I'm definitely going to get the second one after this but it just felt like that. It felt like a introductory interlude to get you into the main plot of the story. It kind of opened up all these little windows of what possibly could happen and what may happen but nothing actually happens in the first book but I really did enjoy it I think it was a different reading experience to these two the both being quite fast funny or like young language this one was on a different level and I'm glad I took my time with this one even though I didn't read it within Tome Topple it really pushed me to read it and I'm really happy that I did so I had such a blast doing Tome Topple I would definitely do it again if Sam ever does any other big tome reads. I definitely need to get some of the chunky ones off my shelf and I hope you enjoyed my videos and all my wrap-ups and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!